All right, we finally made it the back page and we're now we're in a, a new section. So factor the polynomial completely will be the directions for the next several videos that we go through. And taking a look here at 36, we've been given 81 x squared minus 16. All right, well again, we're still factoring and so we wanna ask ourselves those two vital questions. Is there a GCF? and how many terms are there? Well, if we take a look here at 36, we don't see a GCF, and so let's move on to question number two. How many terms are there? Well, we have one term and two terms, and you will either recall from class or the past lab, or if you picked up that, uh, that reference sheet for factoring uh, that I talked about uh, at the beginning of the playlist, uh, either by emailing me or stop by the past lab, you will notice that when we're talking about two terms, you want to look for either the difference of perfect squares or you're going to be factoring cubes. Well, we're not dealing with cubes here, right? Because I have a square here. So we can go ahead and eliminate the possibility of working with cubes. But how about the difference of perfect squares? Well, let's see. 81, yeah, that's a perfect square. And we know we're dealing with a square here in this term because we have a 2 as our exponent, which is a square. And then 16 is a perfect square, isn't it? So this must be a difference because we can only do a difference of perfect squares when it's a minus. Um, and so let's go ahead and, and deal with this. And these are really nice because they factor really easily. What is the square root of 81? 9. And we're dealing with x, so x and x. And what is the square root of 16? 4. So 4 and 4. And then we do plus and minus, and we have our factored form. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at 37. And they give us 49k squared minus 25m squared. All right, again, question number one, is there a GCF? No, I don't see one, but we're dealing with now question two, which asks how many terms? Well, I have two terms, so I need to be on the lookout for either the difference of perfect squares or we're gonna be factoring the sum or difference of cubes. Well, we're not dealing with cubes here because these would have to be threes, right? So we must be dealing with a difference of perfect squares. And in fact, we are, right? Forty-nine is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square. So let's go ahead and create our two sets of parentheses. What is the uh, square root of 49? Well, it's seven and seven, and we're dealing with a K here, aren't we? So K and K. And what is the square root of 25? Well, it's five and five, and we're dealing with uh, an M here. So let's go ahead and put our M at the end. And then just like before, all we do is say plus and minus, and we have our factored form of number 37. So these are really nice, the difference of perfect squares. All you wanna do is say, all right, is my coefficient a perfect square? And you, you'll wanna go through and really try to memorize your squared uh, terms. So one squared you'll know is one, two squared. Let me go ahead and write all these out, oops. Three squared. 4 squared, 5 squared, 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, and 10 squared. So 3 squared we have not, oops, forgot this one, 2 squared is 4, so 4 squared is 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. So when you are dealing with two terms, the difference of squares, you wanna be on the lookout for these numbers because these are perfect square numbers. And so as soon as you see these in one of your uh, two term problems, hopefully some alarm bells are going off saying, oh, difference of perfect squares, difference of perfect squares. All right, so go ahead and, and try to memorize those because they're going to come up a lot. All right, so that was 36 and 37. Let's go ahead and take a look at 38 and 39.